Introduction How to Make Candles Yankee Candle Company The Yankee Candle Company is known for providing quality candles in an array of colors and wonderful fragrances. They have been in business since 1969 when a young boy named Mike Kittredge made a candle from melted crayons as a gift for his mother. His friends and family members loved it and he began selling them. Soon the demand for them was more than he could keep up with. Mike soon learned that the area in his parents' home he was using to make the candles wasn't large enough. He also learned he needed help to meet the supply demands. At the tender age of 19, he invested in retail space to make and sell his candles. In 1974 the business was moved into an old paper mill in Mike's hometown of Hadley, Massachusetts. In 1983 the business relocated to a factory built in South Deerfield, Massachusetts where it remains today. The company is a proud employer of more than 5,000 employees. These hard workers manufacture approximately 80 million candles each year. Customer satisfaction with their products has earned them the position as the nation's top candle designer manufacturer and retailer in the industry. Customers are impressed with the selection of candles the Yankee Candle Company has to offer. The collection includes votives, pillars and tea lights. Their most popular selling line is the jar candle. These are sold with a wick as well as with a burner that the jar sits on instead of using a wick. Once you know the style of candles you want, making a decision on the color and fragrance can be quite difficult. The company offers a free catalog featuring all of the selections available. You can request one online or by calling the toll-free number. For those interested in purchasing Yankee candles, you don't have to look far. They are sold in over 17,000 different retail stores around the United States. In addition, there are 385 Yankee Candle stores located throughout 42 states. Sales on the internet at retail shops and at www.yankeecandle.com are unbelievable. You can have them shipped directly to your door. Now if the internet only gave us the option to smell them as well. The Yankee Candle Company has fared well in Europe as well with over 2,000 stores carrying the candles. Yankee Candle Company contributes its success in the candle industry by always using quality supplies in all their products. They use the highest quality of paraffin and natural wax to create their candles. The wicks are designed to light quickly and burn evenly. Customers have learned that the Yankee Candle Company offers excellent candle products that burn for long periods of time. The jar candles burn up to 50 hours each. Customers are happy with the look, quality, and selection of Yankee candles, often returning to purchase more for or to give as gifts. Customers are also very satisfied with the price of Yankee candles as they are lower than most of their competitors. Almost all schools participant in fundraisers. Yankee Candle Company works with schools to offer candle sales as a fundraising project. Education is important to Yankee Candle Company, and schools earn a large profit for their sales. If you are interested in more information on fundraising opportunities, call or email the Yankee Candle Company. They will happily send you brochures on the program as well as answer any questions you may have. Providing quality customer service is very important to the Yankee Candle Company. They want customers to be completely satisfied with the candle products. You can contact their customer service department if you have questions, comments, or concerns about your candle products. Safety is very important as well so please report any potential candle safety hazards to them as well. The Yankee Candle Company reminds customers to only use the candles for their intended purpose. Never leave candles burning unattended and keep them out of reach of children. The history of candle making. The art of making candles has been around since primitive times. Of course, as time went by they become much different in design than what they were back then. In the early days, candles were a necessity for heat and light. Today they serve as decorations, wonderfully smelling mechanisms in our homes, and offer light for romantic dinners and baths. The first known use of candles is not completely known. The remains of clay candle holders that date back to 4 BC have given us the knowledge that they have been in use for a very long time. Those clay candle holders were found in Egypt. Candles were also used in ancient times in both China and Japan. These candles were made of wax extracted from insects and seeds. The taper candles of India were made from the wax extracted from boiled cinnamon. Candles are not known to exist in American until 1 AD. 
It is believed Native Americans burned oily fish and the back of the cerio tree. When settlers came to New England, they used similar techniques to extract wax from bayberries. Many modern candle makers still use that process to make bayberry candles. However, it is quite expensive to do so. Tallow was the product used to make candles in the 1600s and 1700s. This is a byproduct from animal fat. The product worked well but had a foul odor, especially when it was burning. Beeswax and paraffin wax both were introduced in the early 1800s, and tallow stopped being used. The dipping process for taper candles as we know it today began in 13 AD. Traveler merchants went door to door from town to town. While there, they made taper candles for individuals in their homes. Around 15 AD the idea to use molds for various types of candles was introduced in Paris. While this greatly improved the candle making process, there were still issues with getting the candles to burn properly. In the 1800s candle makers felt the wick was the weakest area of the candle as well as the cause for defective burning patterns. A braided wick was developed in 1825 that seemed to greatly improve the burning of several types of candles. By 1830, a process was in place to make candles using paraffin wax and molds. These candles were of good quality and burned well. As gas and electricity were introduced, the candle making process continued to evolve. It became much easier and faster to melt the paraffin wax. It is believed that the reason so many of the elements of candle making stayed the same, including the hand dipping process is because the popularity of candles diminished with the introduction of electricity. Today, candle making is a well-known art form. There are many companies who manufacture wonderful candles with some very unique fragrances. There are also small businesses that still make their candles by home in their kitchen. Candle making is a great hobby and fun activity for the whole family to be involved in. Candles are now used more for luxury and pleasure than for light or heat. The candle industry continues to grow with new types of candles being introduced all the time. The amount of colors, fragrances, and types of candles to choose from in the marketplace is absolutely amazing. Candles are a very common home decorating item. They are used to accent any room in your house. They are a common centerpiece for dinner parties and formal occasions. The unity candles that are presided over at many weddings hold a deep sense of tradition in the American culture. The art of making candles has definitely changed over time. If you are interested in trying your hand at it, choose a candle that is fairly easy to make such as the container candle or the votive. This will allow you the chance to get used to the process. There are several good candle making kits available for a low price as well as books to give you tips and assistance along the way. Use old crayons to make candles. If you have children in your home, chances are you have an abundance of worn down crayons that don't get used much anymore. Before throwing them out and buying new ones, consider using them to make candles. This can be a great way to turn them into something new and bright again. Most children will love the idea of creating candles with you and enjoy knowing their old crayons helped create them. Making candles out of crayons can also be a great gift-giving idea. Before you get started, discuss safety with your children. Since the crayons will have to be melted at a very high heat, they will not be able to participate in that portion of the candle making process. Assure them that there are many other aspects of the candle making that they can be a part of. To start, gather your supplies. In addition to the crayons, you will need a wax cartoon. This can be from milk, fabric softener, or orange juice. You will also need paraffin wax, two full ice cube trays, a double boiler, and white packing string. If you don't want to use your double boiler an old coffee can and a saucepan will work just as well. Trim the top half of the wax carton, leaving it approximately 6 inches high. You will want to cut the string at least 8 inches long. You will later cut the wick to fit the holder. To ensure a wick that burns easier take 3 pieces and bread them together. Use smaller pieces of string to tie the ends together. The holders for your candles can be anything you desire as long as they are non-flammable. Pretty vases, glasses, and jars work nicely. Melt about 3 pounds of paraffin wax in the double boiler or coffee can. To help it melt faster, cut it into small chunks. The melting process would take about 15 to 20 minutes. While the wax is melting, peel the papers off of the old crayons. 
when your children can choose to separate the colors by lights and darks to have a mix that melds well or you can mix it all together and see what the color ends up being. For best results, only add the crayons to the wax after it has completely melted. After the crayons and wax have both melted together, immediately remove the mixture from the stove and pour into your candle holders. If you would like to make scented candles try adding a splash of cinnamon or vanilla to your hot wax mixture. It's important that the candles by left alone to completely harden. Make sure you have an area this can be done without disruption. It is also important to make sure small children can't reach them, as out of curiosity they may want to check on their candles. The wax will stay hot for several hours and can scold the skin. Making candles out of old crayons is a great way to spend the afternoon creating a neat project with your children. This process can also be done at schools and childcare centers with old crayons as presents for parents. Simply allow each child to decorate the outside of their candle holder while adults complete the rest of the process. The process of candle making. Making candles is fun and relaxing. While it does give you the opportunity to be creative, there are some basic candle making steps you need to follow to make the process flow well. Nothing is more disappointing than discovering your candles didn't form correctly. Safety is very important in candle making. Most people make candles in their own kitchen. You will want to have a fire extinguisher handy as well as a non-slip mat placed in from a your stove. Always wear old clothing and long sleeves. However, make sure your sleeves don't dangle where they can fall into the hot wax. Since you will have to get the candle wax very hot to melt completely, there is the risk of severe burns. You also have the risk of starting a fire. It's important to clean up all spilled wax immediately. It won't take long for it to harden, thus becoming very slippery. The dyes and scents used in candle making can leave stains. The best way to set up your work area for candle making is to divide it into three specific workstations for preparation, the melting process, and the cooling process. The preparation area doesn't need to be large, just a flat surface that is well organized. To make the process flow best, use a counter in close proximity to the stove. You will want to keep your utensils, thermometer, additives, and other candle making supplies in this area. It is a good idea to know what types of candles you will be making ahead of time so that you have all the necessary items ready to go. Your melting workstation will likely be the stove. You will need to use a double boiler to melt the wax to a temperature that is hot enough without scorching it. The molecular structure of the wax can be damaged if the direct heat to it is too much. This means your candles won't form well or hold up well when they are used. Wax comes in sheets or blocks. You will need to chip off chunks to melt. A hammer and flat head screwdriver work well for this. Chipping wax should be done in the preparation stage so that you can simply add more pieces throughout the melting process. You will want to weigh each piece of wax before you add it to the pot for melting. This will help you determine how much scent and dye to add, which is based on weight. The cooling station needs to be a flat area such as a countertop or table. The wax needs to cool for several hours so this area needs to be able to withstand high temperatures as well as remain undisturbed for long periods of time. The area should not be directly in the path of sunlight or heating cooling systems. If it is, the candles will not set properly. If you plan to use molds for your candles, have them set up in the cooling area while the wax is melting. Once it is done melting, you will need to pour it immediately into the molds. To prevent a mess from spills, use an old cookie sheet for the molds to rest on. The candle making process will run smooth and efficient if you follow these tips for establishing three workstations. While the process should be fun, it is important that you understand the dangers of candle making including burns and fires. Taking the proper safety precautions will help ensure the creation of candles in your home is a great way to spend your time. Making votive candles. Votive candles are simple, yet beautiful. These candles are often used to accent a centerpiece or design. Often it entails more than one votive candle, but not always. Votives are very cost effective because they burn for about 15 hours. Votives must have a holder as they are not safe to use as a freestanding candle. Many individuals choose to use votive candles in their jack-o'-lanterns at Halloween because they burn for a long time and illuminate the entire face of the jack-o'-lantern. They are also one of the easiest types of candles to make. 
For beginners in the area of candle making votives provide a great learning experience to learn the basics of the candle making process. To get started, you will need to gather your votive candle items. This includes wax, molds, a double boiler, and a thermometer. You will need to have wick and wick tabs for votive candles. The wick tabs serve as a base for the candle. You can choose to purchase dye and fragrance if you wish for your votive candles. To ensure your candles will form properly in the molds, consider investing in mold spray to keep them clean and lubricated. Once the wax has melted, add in any colors and fragrances. Immediately pour the melted wax into the molds, filling them to the lip of the mold. For easy cleanup, place old newspaper under the wax molds before you pour the wax into them. You will need to save about 20% of the melted wax for the next pouring process. While the wax is cooling in the molds, prepare your wicks. Attack a wick several inches longer than the mold to a wick tab. Dip the wicks into the hot wax. Keep an eye on the votive molds as they won't take as long to cool as other types of candles. Once you can tell the wax is starting to harden, insert a wick with the tab into each mold through the bottom. As the wax continues to cool, it will melt to the metal tab, ensuring it stays in place at the base of the candle. As the candles cool, make sure your wick is staying in the center of the votive. Once the wax has completely cooled, you will notice a sinkhole in it due to shrinkage. You will want to pour melted wax into the molds again to remedy this. Make the wax about 15 degrees hotter than the original wax you used to fill the votives. After the candles have completely cooled again, they will slide out of the molds easily. Trim the wick to about an inch from the top of the candle. For safety, you will want to use a votive holder that is an inch or two taller than the candle itself. Votive candles add class and charm to any home or special occasion. They are fun and simple to make. You can add any color or scent to your votive candles to add a personal touch to them. Votive candles burn for a long time, making them a worthwhile candle to use. They also make excellent gifts. To make the process even less expensive, look for votive candle holders at thrift shops and yard sales. You can further personalize your votive candles by applying pretty ribbon with a hot glue gun around the rim of the votive candle holder. Save money on candle making supplies. Candle making can be a great pastime, hobby, or business venture. While the supplies for candling making are remarkably inexpensive, the cost does start to add up over time. There are many ways you can cut back the cost of the candle making supplies, but I caution you not to sacrifice the quality of the products you purchase just to save a few dollars. This is especially important for those who sell their candles. If the quality of the product goes down because you are buying wax and other supplies that are of less quality, you will end up costing your business money over the long haul. Keep a list of the candle making supplies you use. Include the brand, the price, and the amount of the item you get for that price. This will help you compare the prices with sales you run across and know if you are getting a better deal or not. Many craft stores run sales on candle making items before and right after the holidays. This can be a great time to stock up. Checking online auction sites including eBay and Yahoo Auctions can often be an excellent way to find the same candle making products you use at a discounted price. It could be that the seller of the items doesn't have the time to make candles anymore or they simply have moved on to other things. If you use a large volume of candle making supplies on a regular basis, consider buying them wholesale. You will pay more upfront for your supplies, yet overall you will save a considerable amount of money. You can search such wholesalers on the internet and compare prices. Many online wholesalers offer free shipping as well so that is another area where you can save money if you normally purchase your candle making supplies online. If you know other people who make candles as well consider buying in bulk and sharing the cost as well as the supplies. This is an easy way for everyone to get a discount as well as reduce the cost at the time of purchase. Some of the discount candle making products on the market are very comparable to the quality products you already use. A good way to tell is to compare the ingredients. You can research the necessary ingredients of each item on the internet. If the discount products contain all the major ingredients as the candle making supplies you already use, then give it a try. It is recommended that you only purchase one or two items at first to test the quality. Keep track of where you purchase the discounted items so you can return to that retailer or online store if you are happy with the quality.
quality of the products. Containers and holders for your candles are one area you should never spend a great deal of money on. I 1T recommend buying them for regular price unless they are for a wedding or other very special occasion. You can buy mason jars, extra glassware, votive holders, and many other containers to use candle making at thrift stores and garage sales for a very reasonable price. You might also check the online auctions to purchase large quantities of candle making container and holders at a very good price. The supplies used in candle making can cost you a great deal of money over time. To save money on the quality supplies you use, take the time to compare prices both online and at local retailers. Take advantage of discounts and sales throughout the year at craft stores. Be cautious when looking at discount candle making supplies. You want to make sure they offer the same quality that you are already using. Finding supplies at online auctions and buying them in bulk are also great ways to save you money on candle making supplies. Making taper candles. Taper candles add elegance to your dinner table. They are perfect for romantic evenings at home. You can make your own taper candles without much experience in candle making. The process of making taper candles involves some dipping rather than using molds or jars. Hand dipping takes some practice to get the hang of, but you will be a pro in no time. While you are practicing, you can melt that wax down again and again until you know the right way to form your taper candles. During practice, don't add any color either to keep the costs low. You will need to purchase a dipping can from a craft store or online to make taper candles correctly. A double boiler is too narrow to make this long candles. In addition, you will need a thermometer, wax, wick, dye for color, and fragrances to add scent if you desire. It is important you buy wick specially designed for taper candles. If you use pillar wick, your taper candles won't tea burn properly. To make the best quality taper candles you will want to use paraffin wax. Beeswax can bend easier, especially on warm days. To melt the wax properly, use a large pot with a few inches of water for the dipping can to sit in. Never place the dipping can directly on the stove top as this is a safety issue. You may also expose your home to toxic fumes. While your wax is melting, work on your wigs. It is important you buy wigs specially designed for taper candles. If you use pillar wick, your taper candles won't tea burn properly. Cut the wick at least 4 inches longer than you want your candles to be. If you are making sets of taper candles, make sure each wick is cut the same exact length. This is easy to do by cutting one, then folding other pieces over and making a few more cuts. Once your wax has melted and at a temperature of between 150 and 165 degrees, you can start the dipping process. If you are going to add color or scent you will want to do it now. Move the dipping can to a flat, dry surface. If you are using a countertop, place a towel or cookie sheet under the dipping can. Take a wick and dip it into the hot wax. You will only be getting the wick covered the first few dips. The process of dipping taper candles is easy, yet time consuming. You will get the best looking candles if you don't try to rush the process. Each dip should be a quick in and out process. Don't allow the candle to linger in the wax hoping it will absorb more. Instead, it will cause your taper candles to have a chunky texture rather than a smooth finish. As the wax starts to cool off take the time to stop dipping and heat it again. Some candle makers dip while they have another dipping can of wax melting on the stove. This way, once the wax they are working with cools they can switch. This keeps the process going if you are able to take advantage of it. The number of times you will dip each candle depends on the width you want them. If you are making pairs, keep track of how many times you dip each one so they will match. As the wax begins to cool after each dip, you can dip it again. As the candle gets wider you will need to allow it to cool longer after each dip. You can also try dipping two of the same time allowing one to cool while you dip the other of the set. Once the candle is the desired size and cools completely, cut the wick 2 inch of the top of the candle. Making hand dip taper candles is a great project. The process is not difficult once you get the process of the dipping down. These candles are great centerpieces and often used at weddings. You can make them any color you like for the occasion. There are many gorgeous taper candle holders on the market to add even more appeal to the lovely candles you created. Operating a successful candle making business making candles can be great fun. 
Some people choose to take their love of this art and make money doing what they enjoy spending their time on. There are many areas of the candle making business you need to consider before embarking on such an adventure. Knowing how to make quality candles isn't enough. You need to educate yourself on ways to promote your candles, ordering supplies, offering customer service, and determining a price for your candles. We all know candles are a very popular item, so the market for such products is out there. However, that market can't purchase your candles if they don't know about it. You will need to establish a plan including where you plan to sell your candles, and then come up with a handle of ways to get attention to them. There are many places to sell candles. You can do so from your own home or rent space at craft shows. Often word of mouth will result in orders. You can also choose to advertise on the internet. Advertising online can be expensive, but it doesn't have to be. Write about your business on a blog or purchase services from a web hosting company. They often offer excellent tools for setting up a web page and directing traffic to your site. In addition, they provide the shopping cart and even credit card processing for you. Most web hosting companies charge $20 per month, which isn't a bad investment. Placing your candles on eBay or other online auction sites is a great way to generate sales. As you accumulate feedback for selling a quality product you will get more buyers. Before you can do any advertising, you will need to decide what types of candles to sell. You will generate more sales if you show pictures of your work with each type of candle you sell. People buying candles want to visualize the product they are purchasing. Once your business starts turning a profit, consider buying supplies in large quantities to get a discount. The secret to being a successful candle making business is selling the product at a fair enough price that the consumer will buy it. Yet you also need to cover the cost of your time and supplies, while making a reasonable profit. Don't be tempted to cut corners on the quality of your supplies as this can greatly alter the quality of your product. Once the word is out that your quality is poor, you will have a hard time maintaining sales. To generate business, offer promotions. You can offer free shipping for your candle products at the online auction sites to have an advantage over the competition. Many auction surfers will buy a product with free shipping over one with low shipping. You can also offer a free candle with the purchase of three or even to send a personalized card if the buyer is going to use the candle as a gift. Many successful candle making companies offer personalized service. This means customers can ask for a particular type of candle in a color and you will make it for them. This often costs the customer more, but they are likely willing to pay it. Make sure you communicate well with your customers and know exactly what they want before committing to such a project. Every business experiences issues that come up. This is to be expected. Customers are likely to be more forgiving of such issues if they are provided with quality customer service. Make sure customers have a way to get into contact with you. Work out a resolution to any issues that you will both be happy with. It is best to outline return policies on your website as well so that there is a place customers can review such information. Choosing to start your own business is a wonderful and exciting time. Selling your own candles gives you a business where you can be proud of the quality product you are making. Taking the time to learn the basics of the business before jumping in will help ensure this is a fun business venture for you and hopefully one that is going to be quite profitable. Problems and solutions for candle making. Making candles can be great fun. It is very exciting to decide what type of candle to make and getting your supplies. However, some individuals quickly become disappointed and frustrated with the process and give up. There are some common problems that beginners experience with candle making. Most of them have quick and easy solutions. It is recommended that all beginners start with the basic candle making process. This gives you the opportunity to learn the basics, then you can move on to making the types of candles you really want to. One secret to making great candles is to use quality products. In general, candle making supplies are inexpensive. If the wax you purchase is of poor quality, then it is never going to make quality candles. Heating the wax to the proper temperature is very important. The temperature will change depending on the type of candle you are making with it. If the wax isnt hot enough it won't form correctly. Likewise, wax that is too hot will lose luster and won't be as sturdy once it cools. Have you ever made a beautiful candle, but when you lit it the room filled with smoke rather than the fragrance of the candle? 
This problem has to do with your wick, it is too long. Simply cut them shorter for future candles. You can snip the tips of the candles you have already created and this should remedy the situation. Some candles burn and smell great, but they look ugly after a few uses with a crater in the middle of the candle while the edges of the candle jar haven't even been touched. This is the result of a wick that isnt wide enough. There isnt much you can do for candles you have already made except melt the wax in them and start over. You can purchase a wider wick or braid three together to get a good thickness. The wider the candle jar, the wider you need your wick to be for the candle to burn evenly. Cooling candles is an area of trouble for many beginners. Don't rush the cooling process or you will damage the hardness of the candle. Forcing the candle to cool will also result in bubbles forming in the top and middle of the candle. While it won't be a physical defect, the melting wax will go into these bubbles when you have the candle lit resulting in the wick going out. Candles should be allowed to cool in an area where they won't be moved until completely cool. The area needs to be flat and out of direct sunlight. You will also want to make sure there aren't any heating or cooling vents in the cooling area. If you notice that your cooled candle ISNT is appealing as UD like because the wax pulled away from the glass jar in some areas, try heating your jars in the microwave for a minute or two right before you fill them. This will help the wax adhere to it correctly with a very smooth look all the way around the jar. It is important to remember that candle making involves some basic concepts. It will take a few tries to complete the steps properly, but give it some time. You will have to experiment to find the methods that work best in your work environment to make the candles you want. It is suggested that you only make a few candles at a time to keep from wasting money on supplies while you are learning. Make sure the finished product doesn't have any burning issues with the wick or bubbles. If it does, simply melt the wax again and try it once more. Once you have mastered the basics of candle making, you can experiment with different types of candles. The internet is a great place to find candle making tips as well as troubleshooting for your candle making problems. Soy candles. Making your own candles is very popular. It has always been done with paraffin wax or beeswax. Soy candles are starting to emerge on the market as well. Soy candles are made out of 100% natural soy wax without any additives. Candles made of soy wax will have a wonderful aroma without having any type of fragrance added. Expert soy candle makers know how to mix the soy wax in several ways that give the natural scent a bit of a difference as well as make it fainter or more powerful. Soy candles can be made with or without wicks. Those with wicks are used the same way as any regular candle out there. Soy candles without wicks work with electric candle warmers. The candle sits on the warmer plate and the warmer is plugged into the wall. There is no flame to cause a fire. Wickless soy candles are a great choice for dorm rooms, apartments, offices, and anywhere that there is a potential of a candle being left burning that can cause a fire. Many offices and dorm rooms have put a ban on burning candles for this reason, but they often do allow the wickless candles using the burners. Most candle makers who have tried soy wax are very happy with the results. It has a wonder natural scent and the texture of the melted wax makes candles that are very glossy and smooth. It is not necessary to add additives to soy wax as you often have to with paraffin and beeswax. The additives for those types of wax are for hardness and gloss. Soy wax offers both on its own. Soy wax is cheaper than other types of wax as well. If you want to make candles on a tight budget, this would be the way to go. You will save money on the wax and you won't need to purchase additives or scents. If you are planning to make soy candles to sell, you can make a higher profit because your costs are lower. If you aren't sure, you can purchase a soy wax candle making kit online for less than $20. It comes with all the supplies you need to make 5 candles, including the jars and lids. Many people enjoy the scent of a burning candle, but find the smoke from them can be irritating. This is especially true of individuals who are on oxygen, have bronchitis, or even allergy sufferers. Since soy wax is all natural, there is no smoke or irritates in the air from it. This makes soy wax candles a great alternative for many who otherwise wouldn't be able to enjoy using candles. Candle making is an excellent craft that many individuals enjoy both as a hobby and as a home business. Soy wax is not used as commonly as paraffin or beeswax, yet it works just as well for candle making. 
Since soy wax is less expensive and very easy to work with, consider trying it. Soy wax melts faster as well, reducing your overall production time. Soy wax is not carried in all craft stores, but you can easily purchase it online in amounts from £3 to £50. The more you buy, the less you will pay per pound, giving you additional savings. Prairie Candle Company The Prairie Candle Company has been a family-owned business in operation for 10 years. Located in the rural community of Springfield, Colorado, these jar candles are known in the area for being pretty, colorful, wonderful smelling, and long-lasting. Prairie Candle Company takes pride in offering customers the best quality candle products. They use only top-of-the-line wax and supplies for optimum results. Prairie Candle Company was developed out of a person's love for candles. However, they were disappointed that most candles lost their smell quickly or they didn't burn evenly. Since they enjoyed candles so much, research was conducted to develop a product that doesn't smoke, it burns evenly, and it burns to the bottom of the jar. This is what we know as the Prairie Candle today. The classic collection of Prairie Candles come in 5 sizes and 36 fragrances. Choose from 4.5 ounces, 10 ounces, 10.5 ounces, 16 ounces, or 26 ounces. The fragrances include some classics such as cinnamon and vanilla. There are some very original scents as well including cucumber melon and orange sherbet. Each prairie candle in the classic collection comes with a glass lid. The colors of the candles are very pretty. The all-natural soy collection comes in 4 sizes and 24 great fragrances. These candles come in a glass jar with a wooden top. Choose from a small, medium, large, or extra-large sugar pot. Flavors like kinnaban and cinnamon cider will make your mouth water. For the cowboy types out there, you will simply enjoy the redneck collection. These candles come in tin cans that look similar to cans of shoe polish. These 6-ounce tins are available in 16 fragrances with names like Grizzly Breath which is cinnamon and Possum Porridge which is Spring Fever. You will have fun with these great candle names and the silly picture on each one. Cup and Pale Candles by the Prairie Candle Company are very unique looking. There are 7 fragrances to choose from including Cherry Vanilla. The Cup and Pale are white in color and very rustic looking. These are great for gift giving or home decorating. The 14 layer jar candles will make your sweet tooth kick into gear. These candles are available in 16 ounce jars. The fragrances include orange sherbet and cream as well as pralines and cream. Your friends and family may be disappointed as they approach your home, thinking they are about to be offered a delicious homemade treat. Pillar candles are available from the Prairie Candle Company line in 6 sizes and 6 fragrances. Sinfully Vanilla sounds great. Choose from solid color pillars or multicolored ones. You really have to see pictures of these pillar candles to appreciate just how beautiful they are. The Prairie Candle line is an excellent way to make money for your school. Their fundraiser program is very generous. Your school will make a 50% profit on the sales. This will result in a lot more money raised than most fundraisers. Candles are also easier to sell than cakes or cookies. To make the process even easier, the Prairie Candle Company offers to provide you with all the paperwork. The items are delivered to your school already pre-packed for each student, eliminating the time needed to sort most fundraiser items. Contact them for more information on the fundraising program. If you're interested in earning extra money, consider becoming a wholesaler for the Prairie Candle Company. You will be provided with special candle display shelves to allocate your space better. Contact the company for further information on the wholesale process. The Prairie Candle Company offers many great candle options for your home or for you to give for gifts. You will enjoy the many colors, styles, and fragrances of this candle line. They use the best candle making processes and supplies to ensure all the candles you purchase will not only look great but burn for hours on end. You can purchase Prairie Candles from various retailers or at their online store. Making Unity Candles Unity candles are often a very important part of traditional wedding ceremonies. This candle is a symbol of the union both families. The ceremony involves the bride and groom each lighting a taper candle with a large column candle in the middle. Once they have lit their taper candles, the bride and groom light the column with the flames form the tapers. It is very simple to make these beautiful candles. By making them, you can personalize the message the message on the column candle for those getting married. 
The message can be a poem, biblical scripture, or even a photo of the couple getting married. Making the taper candles is very simple. It involves the hand dipping process. You will dip the two wicks over and over again in the hot wax until the taper candles are the desired width. After they have completely cooled you can trim the wick two inch at the top of the candle. Making Unity Candles Unity candles are often a very important part of traditional wedding ceremonies. This candle is a symbol of the union both families. The ceremony involves the bride and groom each lighting a taper candle with a large column candle in the middle. Once they have lit their taper candles, the bride and groom light the column with the flames form the tapers. It's very simple to make these beautiful candles. By making them, you can personalize the message the message on the column candle for those getting married. The message can be a poem, biblical scripture, or even a photo of the couple getting married. Making the taper candles is very simple. It involves the hand dipping process. You will dip the two wicks over and over again in the hot wax until the taper candles are the desired width. After they have completely cooled you can trim the wick two inch at the top of the candle. To make the column candle you will need to use a candle mold. Simply heat the wax and pour it into the mold until it completely cools. Prior to pouring the wax into the mold you will need to insert the wick from the bottom of the mold. Cut the wick several inches longer so that you can tie it to a pencil or other object. This will keep the wick scented while the candle is cooling. After the column candle has cooled, you can place a poem, saying, photo, or even a wedding invitation to the candle using double stick tape or a glue gun. For a beautiful effect, consider cutting the attachment in an oval shape using the scissors that will leave a ridge all the way around the attachment. To add beauty and appeal to the unity candles, you can make bows for them out of the wedding colors. For best results, use a piece of wire for each candle. Twist the wire in the front gently so you don't damage the candles but enough to hold it securely in place. Don't worry about the wire being seen as the beautiful bows will cover it up. You will want to find some very pretty taper candle holders for these precious unity candles. Generally, the column candle will sit on a matching flat candle holder, similar to a small plate. With the overall expense of a wedding, creating your own unity candles or allowing a friend or family member to do so as a gift will save you plenty. There are many great books available in craft stores and some bridal shops that provide step-by-step -step instructions for creating your own unity candles. The internet also offers great ideas and tips for making the process fun. Creating quality candles doesn't have to be expensive or difficult. The unity candle ceremony is an important part of many wedding ceremonies. You can provide the bride and groom with a wonderful trio of candles for their ceremony that they will treasure forever. The ability to add a personalized attachment to the column candle is a great incentive for making them yourself. Making additional column candles for the parents of the bride and groom or the wedding party is a great gift idea as well. You can place them in gift bags with bows that match the colors of the wedding. Terms and conditions. Legal notice. The publisher has strived to be as accurate and complete as possible in the creation of this report, notwithstanding the fact that he does not warrant or represent at any time that the contents within are accurate due to the rapidly changing nature of the internet. While all attempts have been made to verify information provided in this publication, the publisher assumes no responsibility for errors, omissions, or contrary interpretation of the subject matter herein. Any perceived slights of specific persons, peoples, or organizations are unintentional. In practical advice books, like anything else in life, there are no guarantees of income made. Readers are cautioned to reply on their own judgment about their individual circumstances to act accordingly. This book is not intended for use as a source of legal, business, accounting or financial advice. All readers are advised to seek services of competent professionals in legal, business, accounting and finance fields. You are encouraged to print this book for easy reading. Don't leave before you press like button below and subscribe to this channel. As a subscriber you will receive a new notifications every time a new video is uploaded. Good luck.